Chapter 4 Why Toad Feels So Depressed Toad found that the ensuing week went by very slowly. He felt listless and kept waking early and having sad and morbid thoughts. He usually felt better as the day wore on, but in the evenings he felt that he began to feel quite anxious. He made himself go for a walk every day, and although there was some wintry sunshine, it seemed to him that he saw everything in monochrome, like an old sepia photograph. Initially his friends visited him and tried to cheer him up. He and the rat played many games of cribbage, 15-2, 15-4, and a pair of six, and the mole tried to amuse him with all the latest Riverbank news. You'll never believe what Otto got up to last week. Badger would sit watching the proceedings, and then, when there was silence, he would begin a long and not entirely uninteresting story concerning his adventures as a young animal with Toad's father. And there we were, miles from home and not a penny in our pockets, when I thought up this rather clever idea. After all this, Toad would retire to bed exhausted, only to wake at three in the morning and toss and turn until dawn. When Tuesday finally arrived, Toad experienced a variety of emotions as he walked slowly towards the heronry. He felt some relief that at last the day was here when he would see the councillor again, although he had very mixed feelings towards him. He felt anxious about what might be said and what might be done. Already he had had to fight quite hard to be allowed to make the journey on his own, but if he had learned anything from the first encounter, it was that the work he had to do could only be done by himself. He was beginning to realise that he had better start to grow up. For the second time he found himself sitting in the study with the counsellor opposite him. Again there was silence and Toad experienced the same mounting pressure and increasing anxiety. Eventually the counsellor spoke. "'Well, Toad, how are you feeling today?' "'Quite well, thank you,' replied Toad in the words that he had been taught to say as a very little Toad, and which he now used automatically as the unthinking response to this question. It actually meant nothing, but the counsellor was not interested in verbal trivia. "'Let me ask you again. How are you really feeling?' Toad felt very uncomfortable. "'How do you mean exactly feeling?' Toad was not being deliberately obtuse. Like many people, he had never consciously considered his own emotions in such a way as he could describe them to himself, let alone to anyone else. In fact, he had developed many behavioural strategies, albeit unconsciously, to avoid the possibility of gaining self-knowledge. He had become a great greeter, and his well-known opening gambit on meeting other animals was a hearty, "'Hello, you fellows!' followed by something like, "'You'll never guess what I've been doing!' or else, "'Come and see this!' Consequently, no one had ever asked him how he was, let alone how he felt. So it was a new and unsettling experience to be asked, how are you feeling, especially by someone who seemed to be genuinely interested in his answer. But because Toad had never indulged in self-analysis, he genuinely did not know how to describe his internal state. Let me ask the question in a different way, said the counsellor. Suppose we had a sort of thermometer that could measure how you were feeling. It has a ten-point scale, the lowest point on the scale is one which means that you're feeling awful and probably suicidal. The midpoint is five and means that you are not feeling too bad. Ten is the highest point and means you are feeling euphoric. There was a flip chart next to the counsellor on which he drew his feelings thermometer. Then he handed Toad the crayon and said, Where would you say you are now, Toad? Without hesitation, Toad put a mark on the scale midway between one and two. "'Have you ever had any suicidal thoughts?' asked the counsellor in a straightforward sort of way. This was a shocking question to ask, and it frightened Toad to hear it, and yet, at the same time, it came as something of a relief. "'Yes, I have,' he replied quietly. "'About three months ago things seemed so black that I could see no way out, and I thought I might do something silly. But that was before Mole found me. Since then I have still felt depressed, but I haven't had those awful thoughts.' And, he continued with a little more spirit, I, I certainly wouldn't do anything like that now. So how do you feel now? Again, that same question. I feel, said Toad, as if I don't have much value. I keep thinking that I have made a mess of my life, not like Rat or Mole or especially Badger, who are all well respected. I'm a bit of a joke, really. "'Oh, yes, kind-hearted, they say, and good for a laugh, and generous to a fault. Good old Toady, they say. But what have I ever done with my life? What have I ever achieved? 
and here Toad broke into sobs that racked his frame. The councillor pushed the paper tissues towards him. After a while he asked, "'Have you always felt like this?' "'Yes, I suppose I have, on and off, for a long time. Mind, I do have times when things seem better and I can get really involved in something, but then my spirits start to fall and I seem to lose interest. It's then that I get into what I can only describe as my familiar sad feelings, and that is how I'm feeling now.' "'So what do you think made you feel unhappy this time?' the councillor asked. "'It's quite a long story,' said Toad. "'I'm listening,' said the councillor. So Toad began. "'I am sure that you know all about my escape from prison, about washerwomen and barges and horses and motor cars. These are not events in my life of which I am particularly proud, nor do I wish to die them.' "'but they have been talked about a lot and published, "'so I mean say no more about them unless you ask me.' "'Toad stopped and looked inquiring at Heron, "'who gave no response, and so he continued. "'Of course those events had an enormous effect on me, "'but I think I would have got over them, "'as in many ways I have done. "'What really hurt was the horrid way I was treated on my return.' "'Do you remember anything in particular?' asked Heron. "'Yes, I do.' I can't stop going over those events in my mind time and time again until I can almost enumerate each incident. What's the first of these? asked Heron. Well, Toad continued, to begin with, after my rather clever escape, when I was being chased by a crowd of hooligans and busybodies, by a piece of sheer bad luck I fell into the river and nearly drowned. Fortunately, Ratty pulled me out of the water, and I shall never cease to be grateful to him. I don't quite understand, said Heron. "'Why should that make you feel unhappy?' "'Because of his attitude,' replied Toad. "'Naturally I was dying to tell him all about my adventures, "'and I began to recount them even before my clothes were dry. "'But instead of being interested, Rat accused me of swaggering "'and insisted that, that I go and change and try to look like a gentleman, "'if I could. "'Just imagine, I hadn't seen him for months, and that's how he spoke to me.' "'So how did that make you feel?' asked Heron. Initially I felt angry. After all, I'd had enough of being ordered about in prison. But I was still feeling grateful to Rat for rescuing me, so I did as he said. We had lunch. I was starving. And I told Rat all about my adventures. You know, they are really interesting and much more exciting than Rat's rather dull life. So how did he respond? asked Heron. You won't believe it, but what he actually said was, Don't you see what an awful ass you've been making of yourself? That really hurt me. I felt as if I had been reprimanded. Toe's eyes filled with tears at this unhappy memory. What did you do then? asked the heron. I did what I always do, I suppose. I feel uncomfortable when people are displeased with me, so I try to placate them and deflect their anger. I would promise to do almost anything to make them like me again. So I admitted that I had been an awful ass and promised I would improve my behaviour. "'Did it work?' asked Aaron. "'How do you mean, work?' asked Toad. "'Did it stop Rat from being displeased with you?' "'I'm not sure,' answered Toad, "'because he then told me the awful news "'that Toad Hall had been captured by the Wild Wooders. "'Now this made me really angry. "'I don't often get angry, but I was then. "'Without thinking, I rushed out to recapture my beloved home, "'but the Wild Wooders were in control "'and I almost got a bullet in my brain.' And then they sank my boat. By the time I returned to Rat's place, I was wet and exhausted and feeling in very low spirits. And I had only been home half a day. It wasn't fair. It really wasn't fair. And Toad started to sob again at these unhappy memories. Heron sat quietly listening to all of this and watched Toad closely but said nothing. Toad's sobs gradually turned to sniffs and he looked the picture of misery with some strands of snot hanging from his nose. Again, Heron passed him the box of tissues, and, like a little child, Toad obediently took some and blew his nose and wiped his eyes. After a while, Heron said, "'So how did the rat greet you this time?' Toad struggled to keep his voice under control. "'How did rat greet me? You won't believe it. But he was angry with me again. He called me a trying animal and said that he did not know how I managed to keep any friends at all.' I have to admit that I can understand him feeling a bit annoyed. After all, it was his boat that I sunk, but that wasn't my fault. And anyhow, he knew I'd pay for a new one, as I have done, he added in a rather whining tone. So how did you respond to that? asked Heron. 
in the same sort of way, I suppose, tried to placate him. I remember groveling and saying that I had been headstrong and willful, and that I promised to be humble and submissive in the future. When I think of that now, I cringe with embarrassment and wonder how I could ever have said it. But I would say anything to stop people being angry with me and telling me off, especially Ratty, what I thought was my friend. "'So did you start to feel better after this?' inquired the heron. "'Well, I did for a minute,' answered Toad. "'I remember Mole came in then, and he was about the only person who showed any interest in my adventures. But just as I started to tell him of the really interesting bits, in came the one person who can really frighten me. "'Who is that?' asked the heron. "'Badger,' replied Toad. "'Why?' Toad answered immediately. "'Well, for a start, he's big and strong and can seem quite threatening, and when he gives me that stern look, he reminds me of my father, who was always criticising me. Anyhow, Badger told me off good and proper, just as I knew he would. I can still remember his exact words. "'Toad, you're a bad, troublesome little animal, aren't you ashamed of yourself? What would your father have said about these goings-on?' I was so upset by his disapproval that I burst into tears and couldn't say a thing. Here Toad paused, overcome by these unhappy memories, and strove to hold back his imminent tears. After a while he was able to continue. Badger then said he would let bygones be bygones, and we started to make plans to recapture Toad Hall that night. Badger was obviously the leader, although it was my house we were going to rescue. I didn't mind that, because, with all his faults, Badger does seem to be a natural leader. But he seemed to go out of his way to humiliate me. How did he do that? asked the heron. He told us that there was a secret passage leading up to the hall. I knew nothing about this, but Badger said my father had told him of it. But the point was that he referred to father as a worthy animal, a lot worthier than some others I could mention, and he looked straight at me when he said this. It made me feel extremely uncomfortable. Again Toad stopped and swallowed and sniffed and showed every sign of someone working bravely to withstand emotions which were too great to bear. Eventually he was able to continue. And as if that wasn't enough, he went on to say that Father had told him not to tell me because, and I could remember his exact words, he's a good boy but very light and volatile in character. All the others looked at me, and I had to put on a brave face and talked a lot of nonsense to cover my embarrassment, but inside I felt humiliated. Toad paused and reflected on those unhappy feelings. After a while the heron asked, Anything else? Yes, answered Toad, but I don't want to go on. It makes me too upset. Anyhow, you can see why I started to feel miserable. Everyone was being so horrid to me, and it wasn't my fault. There was a long silence, during which neither of them spoke. Then Heron said, This seems a good place to stop and see if there's anything to be learned from all this. Do you mind if I walk around a bit? asked Toad. My back's getting a bit achy. The Heron looked stern. I can't give you permission to make your own decisions, Toad. What do you want to do? I want to walk around a bit, said Toad with some spirit, and under his breath he added, I bloody well will too. Now, said Heron, as a result of listening to your story, I have one question to ask. What's that? asked Toad, resuming his seat. What state would you say you were in during these incidents? I don't understand you, said Toad. What do you mean by state? I mean, replied the heron, what words could you use to describe how you were feeling and acting during these events, which you have just related? Well, I've told you I was feeling very unhappy and miserable and guilty and criticised. So let me ask you again, replied the heron, what state were you in? Toad sat still and thought deeply. He was not given to concentrated thought, but now he reviewed in his mind these unhappy events to see what general lesson he could learn from each particular incident. "'I suppose,' he said slowly, "'that you could say that I was feeling like I used to feel when I was little. "'Was I feeling like a child? Is that what you mean?' "'It's more what you mean, Toad. Does it sound right to you?' "'Yes, it does. Yes, of course it does,' Toad sounded increasingly positive. "'That's just how I was feeling.' It's how I felt when I was a child, and I had been severely reprimanded by my father. So let's call that the child ego state, said the heron. Toad looked puzzled. It's really quite simple, said the heron. You will remember from your school days that ego is the Latin for I, and if we ask what sort of state is he in, 
We are asking, what mode of existence is he in? So when I say that someone is in the child ego state, I mean that they are behaving and feeling like a child. It doesn't mean childish, rather childlike. I think I understand, said Toad. But is that a bad thing, to be in this child state? It's neither good nor bad, answered the heron. It just describes how someone actually is. Perhaps a better question to ask is, how effective is it to be in the child state? Well, said Toad, I don't think your question is very helpful because you obviously can't help getting in a state. So whether it's effective or not is beside the point. It obviously depends on the kind of person you are, and that's something you have no control over. Is that so? asked the heron. Are you in the child state now? No, of course I'm not. I'm talking to you. So why is that? Oh, I don't know why, said Toad peevishly. I wish you would stop picking on me. It's not fair. My brain hurts. You're asking me too many questions. I'm not a psychologist, you know. In that case, said the heron, we had better stop. And so they did.